Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about long step tests, when you should use them, how to calibrate them, and when you should maybe not use a longer step test. Okay, Andrew, when should we use a long step test? Uh, I think the best use of a long step test is when you're really looking to assess physiology. You're trying to look at as much details and data as, as how an athlete responds to all different levels of intensity uh, throughout the step test. So both low intensity, moderate intensity, and high intensity. Uh, and, and, you're, and you're willing and able to have an athlete that can handle the longer duration. So uh, this is most, uh, mostly used for our endurance athletes. Um, but there is information that's worthwhile for even the sprint athletes and, uh, and the non-cyclical athletes as well to look at how their physiology is going to respond over time. When we're talking about a long step test, how long should the, the steps be? And uh, we, can also, we can also work in some rest intervals uh, between those steps. Uh, how long should those be? Yeah, the, um, for a long step test, you can go anywhere from three minutes up to eight minutes per step. Uh, I, I wouldn't go any shorter than three minutes. And there is value at looking at four and five minutes per step. Uh, the challenge is if you go anything less than three minutes, what's going to happen is that, especially if you get into the moderate and higher intensities, the, the athlete's not going to end up in any sort of stability. So their physiology is going to continue to change through that whole three minutes before they actually reach any sort of plateau. And you really want to see, in a longer step test, you actually have the, um, the ability to look at how an athlete settles in at the different intensities. And you want to see that physiology uh, hit some stability before you move to the next step. Uh, so the three minutes is really the, the, the shortest amount of time I would do for a longer step test. Um, Four and five minutes makes a lot more sense to me. If you start getting too long towards eight minutes, uh, the test just becomes overly cumbersome. Uh, we have used eight minute step tests for some of our assessments, especially for our ultra endurance athletes, uh, our Ironman athletes and our ultra runners and things, um, because we really are wanting to see how the body responds uh, much longer than an hour into a test. Uh, but those tests do become very long and they're more like a long training session uh, with very strict um, uh, criteria on them to see how the body's responding. Yeah. It's so like, yeah, typically four to five minutes. Per I step. guess, I guess we could say the longer the event of the athlete, the longer you can afford to go on those steps to see that balance. Absolutely. Especially, especially with your well-trained athletes, they can, they can handle long durations. They're, they're used to it. They're, they're physiologically able to handle the long duration. Mm, yeah, from, from my experience, the, the balance or the middle ground I've been able to find is four minutes because like you were, you were talking about the beginning of the effort, I, I, can, I usually see 90 seconds to 120 seconds. So the first minute and a half to two minutes is the onset kinetic. So things are just getting started and really on the following two minutes of a four minute step, then you can really see what's going on. Uh, is there a balance? Isn't, is it a no balance or wh which direction is that balance going? Uh, but like you said, I think you're right. Three to five minutes is usually the, the confident uh, place to start. Um, now, if we talk about calibrating the test, we talked about uh, calibrating uh, the short uh, step test. How do we calibrate a long step test? Yeah, in, in a similar format is you really need to know the athlete. You have to have some idea of, of what their ability is and where you're trying to take them to. So if they're a, a brand new to cycling or brand new to running, they are not going to be able to get to a very high level. So you're going to start very low and take small steps to get there and knowing that they're going to peter out at a fairly low intensity. So smaller step, uh, lower intensity grades for each step, knowing that you're trying to get at least six or seven different values across the range that you're trying to get to. So Knowing your athlete is really important, uh, where they're going to start and where you think they're going to finish. And uh, I know you've created some uh, templates to help make those decisions. And maybe you want to talk about that. Yeah, I'll talk about the calibration in a second. And like you said, from my personal experience, I always aim for ideally nine to 10 steps that are completed throughout the test. We have a, a nice range of intensities that we can look at and um, definitely trying to, if we have someone's FTP, I would say if you place FTP on step eight, 
you're pretty good because they'll usually last a couple steps past that point. Or if you have critical power, you can put it around there uh, as well if you know those values for your athletes. And otherwise, I'll share in the description a little table that I created for calibrating those longer step tests. Keep in mind that obviously the calibration is going to be um, specific to the protocol that's used. I used a 4-1 protocol, so four-minute work one minute rest and every step we go up a certain number of uh, watts in case of a bike or uh, kilometers per hour in terms of running. So let's give a couple examples for, and like I said, all the resources are, are in the description. For a beginner, we would start at 0.5 watts per kilo. So for someone who's 100 kilos and unfit or, or beginner, uh, we would start them around 50 watts and we would try to aim for the 10th step to be around two watts per kilo. Uh, so for, again, taking that same uh, 100 kilo person, we would put them at 200 watts on the 10th step. And then all you have to do is take uh, your last step minus the first step and then divide by 10. And then you get your increments in between. And if we look at the other end of the spectrum for someone who's uh, an elite level, I would probably start around 1.5 watts. Uh, per kilo. So for a, a 50 kilo uh, high level cyclist, it's maybe a little light, let's say 60 kilo uh, cyclist, uh, high level cyclist, we maybe start around 90 or 100 watts, and they might go up to, to around five watts per kilo. Uh, again, those are, uh, those are those are rough estimates, but they, they give a, a starting point. And again, it's important to communicate with your athlete, with your client, with your patient, um, to try to calibrate that test as, as well as you can. So you can, like we said, get all the information out of the test. Cause if they only complete three or four steps, because you uh, didn't do the calibration appropriately, you don't get all the data uh, that you want out of the test. Andrew, when would it not be recommended to use a long step test? Yeah, the, the, if you're trying to look at maximal values, a long step test isn't going to be where you want to go with this. Um, and if you have, and as you've mentioned, you, you have a way of, of addressing uh, weaker athletes or new athletes to it. And, and they are going to struggle with, with any sort of long version just because they don't have the fitness to handle mm -hmm. it. So those are the two cases that where I would sort of avoid long set tests. I will point out that your numbers for the beginnings of the calibrated things are going to seem low to a lot of people, but they aren't. Those, no. those low wattage, those 50 watts or 60 watts for beginners is where they need to be because that is, that is still a physiologic stimulus to them. It, it, it's hard for co many coaches, especially if you've come out of a competitive training background mm -hmm. to understand how low an intensity people need to start so as not to cause an alarm phase reaction that that overshoots everything they'll they'll drive their heart rate too fast they'll already be breathing well above their threshold if you start them anything lower than the than the recommendations that sean gave which is that sort of that 0.5 uh, watts per kilogram it needs to be that low it's a, it's um it's surprising if you haven't done lots of step tests before how low an intensity you have to do, especially with your beginner athletes. Mm -hmm. I can't overstate that enough. And yeah, I would, I would double down on that and actually say that it's better to be conservative on the starting point and the jumps, even if you have to do more than nine or 10 steps, even if they end up doing 11, 12 or 13, at least you have the breadth of the data and maybe the next time you test them, instead of starting at the 50 watt that you used initially, you'll start at the 70 watt mark and then complete your test from there. Uh, and one thing we wanted to add as well, Andrew, was uh, make sure that when you set up those intensities based on uh, the person's body weight, so in watts per kilo, on subsequent tests, use the same wattage as you did on the first test. So you have a before and after, and you can actually compare what's going on. Otherwise, your, 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 your steps are going to change. If, if, you, if you allow your steps to change based on the person's body weight, that could be changing from one test to the other, then you don't actually have a proper before and after that you can compare. Absolutely. I think those two points are really important. The the maintaining consistency. So the test is the same every time after you've determined that first test. And there is almost no downside to starting too low. The, the no. information that you can gather from a low intensity is equally valid and usable. And we'll talk about that in future discussions about how we can use data at the low intensities to help guide training and help identify things like fat max zones and and other pieces, heart rate, and using heart rate variability and looking at different uh, stress response of how the body responds. So start low, go slow. It's a nice warm up for them, and there's tons of information that you can use from those low intensities. 
Yeah, and the last thing I would add is if you want to know that you've calibrated your test properly as you're going through the test, just ask for the person's RPE at the end of every stage. And if they're going up in more than one RP rating per increment, ideally, if your test is calibrated perfectly, the first interval is a one and the 10th is a 10 out of 10. And if they're going up in twos, like if they're doing, oh, no, that was a two, oh, that was a four, that was a six you're 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 probably way too high in your jumps and you can actually cut the jumps uh during your test if you're able to do that but uh, like you said andrew we can detail that in another video so for any other information make sure you check out the description of this video uh if you want to look at other types of step tests we covered short step tests we'll link that below as well make sure you like the video post all your questions in the comments we look forward to answering them and we'll see you in the next one